I actually wanted to talk about uh, prints. What happens where one day somebody asks for your number and then that afternoon he's on the phone? Yeah, it's pretty surreal. You know, it, it's, I just, there's so many things in my life that happen that I'm just like, it's so crazy that it's like it was meant to be. I was at a point in my career, I'd been a soloist for a couple of years and I was kind of at a standstill. You know, even thinking about my promotion uh, when Kevin McKenzie promoted me to soloist, I didn't feel like a real sense of support, like, I believe in you and we're doing this. So, you know, from the time I became a soloist, it was kind of like shaky and I kind of felt on my own and um, trying to figure out uh, what my future looked like and whether or not I belo really belonged in this world as a black dancer. Really? Yeah, even, you know, up until that point of being, you know, I was this, uh, only the second uh, female, African-American female soloist to be promoted to that position in the company's history. I just didn't feel like a, a big sense of, like, guidance in, in what it meant to be a soloist and work towards being a principal dancer. Um, and I, then I got a call from someone asking if uh, Prince could have my number. And none of it made sense to me. I was shocked and um, I said, okay. And I remember him calling while I was in the middle of a ballet class. And he pretty much said, I've been looking for you for over a year and I haven't been able to get in contact with you, which I was like, that's crazy. But um, he uh, had remade the song um, Crimson and Clover and he just had, you know, when he has his mind set on something, like he is going to do it. And he envisioned me dancing in this video. And he ended up shooting the video with another dancer and, uh, and just thinking like, this isn't it. This isn't what I had envisioned. So he finally connected. And uh, within a couple of days, I was in LA um, improvising on the set. And, uh, and, you know, that was the start of this beautiful friendship that brought me to a, a better place of understanding like what I wanted out of my career, um, which is why I was saying like the time, you know, the timing was just so perfect. I ended up touring with him all over the world um, and having that experience of, of, you know, someone that was such a creative genius that believed in me and was pushing me to explore um, my dance in a, in a different way. Um, it just it allowed me to become the artist that I am today. And the touring started in Europe and then it came uh, stateside. Yes. Tell about those rehearsals at the <laughs> IZAD in uh, New Jersey. Yeah, um, it was an interesting time. You know, Prince was great that he, he understood that ABT and my career as a ballerina, like that's my career. And it's amazing to have the opportunity to do these performances outside of ABT and also expose his audience to classical dance, maybe who didn't have interest or would never step into the Met Metropolitan Opera House. And, um, but I was in the midst of rehearsing for The Nutcracker uh, for ABT when his performances were also going on in Jersey, so. Talk about a it, grueling schedule. It was unbelievable. I would finish rehearsing around nine or 10, and then Prince would pick me up in a limo and rehearse all night there for his shows and then wake up in the morning and have my full day with ABT. You know, it was, I was young and these are sacrifices that I wanted to make because I, I could see the bigger picture. And it's Prince. And it's Prince. Right. And it, it was, it was an incredible experience, you know, performing at Madison Square Garden. And what was it about that moment at MSG? Hmm. There was an energy and a connection with another artist on stage that I'd never uh, experienced before. It was unbelievable to see this person like blossom into this magnetic thing on stage and to be a part of that and to have him, uh, you know, the first time that I, I came onto the stage for my solo and he introduced me, Misty Copeland, like to his audience was just shocking. You know, I wasn't just a backup dancer for him, you know, it was, it, it was a, a collaborative effort and it, and it really... Um, You're thinking what in that moment? It, it shocked me. I like jumped out of my skin and I had to like get back in my skin to finish, to finish performing yeah. because I wasn't expecting for that type of uh, acknowledgement or respect or introduction and um, it was a beautiful moment. And, and the impact he had on your self-confidence and understanding your self-worth? 
mm -hmm. was what? To have another artist, again, of his caliber, um, kind of say to me, uh, to acknowledge the power um, in, in being unique, which is like the opposite of what we're told in ballet. <laughs> you know, it's like everyone's trying so hard to fit into this cookie cutter mold of what, you know, generations and generations of dancers have looked like. And, you know, Prince was like, you're the only black woman in the company. Do you know what power that, you know, you have by like standing out and being different and being unique? And I never looked at myself that way.